There have been a lot of Harry Potter games over the years. Some great, some not so great. It got me with its stingers! But we've never had a single game that attempts to encompass all aspects of the Wizarding World until now. Hogwarts Legacy has been touted as the complete Harry Potter experience, an open world Hogwarts game that's more than just a walking simulator, dueling where the wands don't behave like machine guns, and potion making that won't destroy your wrists. So now that the game is out, I wanted to see how it compares to all of the classic Harry Potter games that we all know so well. And for this video, I'm gonna go light on spoilers. I won't be covering the story beyond the first few hours, and even then I'm gonna be vague. All right, let's dive straight into it. We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry as a fifth year. Wait, what happened to the first four years? And why do all these template characters look 28? Ah yes, the most generic of all characters, that's me all right. It reminds me of Harry's giant head from the Half-Blood Prince game. They both give off that judgmental stare. All right, so the game starts with this old guy, Professor Fig, who's taking you to Hogwarts. You see, I'm not sure if these are supposed to be invisible Thestrals or if the flying horses just glitched out. On the way to Hogwarts, their Uber ride is unfortunately attacked by a dragon. One star. So the old games usually started at the Burrow or Diagon Alley or just straight at Hogwarts. This one's a bit different. It starts on this cliff in the middle of the Scottish Highlands. You then go through this portal and get transported into the Gringotts Bank. Watch your step, Professor Fig. These goblins like to polish the shit out of their floors. After you. Oh, this goblin's got Mr. Tickle arms. Right, so we venture down into the vaults. Something to do with Professor Fig's wife's magic key. You get the trolley sequence, but it's more of a glorified cutscene this time around, unlike the vomit-inducing minigame from the Philosopher's Stone. So you get taken into the vault and then locked in. This is where you learn your first spell. And the spell-learning minigame borrows a lot from the first PC and PlayStation 1 game, merging the tracing with the button combination minigame. It's a bit more streamlined this time around, so you don't end up doing this or this. Not good. Keep trying. Not good. So you learn Lumos, get jumped by a gang of armor, cast a big hamster ball on yourself, step through the Stargate, dip your face in the pensieve, learn about some ancient magic, get ambushed by this pissed off London cabbie, I mean a goblin, he seems to want uh, whatever it is you have, and then suddenly a giant knight appears and you're transported to the Hogwarts grounds. And to be honest, this entire intro section kind of felt like a generic AAA game. I didn't get those Harry Potter feels until I saw the title screen with the train and the soundtrack and the castle. Oh yeah, come on, here we go. I'm ready for the nostalgia, baby. Hit me. Ugh. <sighs> Definitely didn't have this with my old PlayStation 1 disc. Eventually, you're taken to the Great Hall for the sorting. Now, I asked you lovely folks to vote for the house I get sorted into, and you chose Ravenclaw. Thank you for pretending you think I'm smart. And so you get sorted, and then for some reason, everyone just starts clapping for this random fifth year that looks like a 30-year-old Gap model. Anyway, the headmaster, Phineas Black, greets the students and then makes the dreaded announcement. Due to the unfortunate injury on the pitch in last spring's Final, this year's Quidditch season has been cancelled. It will be available via DLC at a later time. Alright, time to start my very first day at Hogwarts. Right, so this is the Ravenclaw common room. Thankfully, the NPCs here are a bit calmer than the ones in the Gryffindor common room in the Prisoner of Azkaban game. <laughs> So your first task is to make friends with a few fellow Ravenclaws, who are all weirdos. I should wander off before someone traces that dung bong back to me. Mate, everyone literally saw you do it a second ago. I want him to be in the perfect place, a place he'll be happy with. She's uh, talking about her potted plant, by the way. But I can't seem to find it. I think you will feel differently after one night up on the tower. Nothing like the smell of fresh parchment, is there? I think I'm going to explore the common room for a bit. Oh, this is a really awkward place to place a urinal. Oh, nice. Look, I can clip through the other Ravenclaws. Um, what, what kind of magic is this? Of course, Hogwarts Castle is a big place, so we will need a map to get around. The Order of the Phoenix game used the Marauders map as a world map. Hogwarts Legacy relies on this 3D map of the castle. Now, the 
big problem with the last attempt at an open world Harry Potter game was the sheer amount of running back and forth around the castle. Luckily, this has now been expedited with a flu powder network that lets you fast travel between locations you've already visited. When it comes to NPCs, well, there's not exactly a lot of variety. There's this guy. Oh, here he is again. And here he is again with a different haircut. And one more time. This is probably the great grandfather of this one guy you kept seeing in the Deathly Hallows Part 1 game. I went over there the other day. I fancy pizza. I've seen a picture of it. Oh, I've never seen anyone do it myself. Now, the most memorable thing about the first Harry Potter game for the Game Boy Advance was the ability to walk around the castle, jinxing the crap out of everyone. This time around, they just look slightly annoyed when you do it. And speaking of spells, it's time to attend a few classes. First up, we have the Charms class, where you learn Accio. As I mentioned earlier, the spells are learned through this motion mechanic. Now, in the first three games, learning a new spell was usually followed by a dungeon challenge that had you utilizing the new spell. There's no dungeon this time around. Instead, the teacher has you utilize the spell against the other students in a mini challenge. In the case of Accio, you have to pull these big balls further than this Gryffindor girl, who, you know, just casually clips right through you. Hold on, am I Bruce Willis in Sixth Sense? Is that the big reveal at the end? Um, Professor, you may want to take this student to the hospital wing. He's uh, glitching pretty bad. I've got to say, this transfiguration professor is so chill. Look at me destroying his office and he doesn't mind at all. Fletwick would have lost his shit by now. Not good. Defense Against the Dark Arts is also a nice chill class. This old lady has you levitating your classmates and then jinxing them in the privates until they go flying. There is a large variety of spells to learn in this game, and they're used for all sorts of purposes. You've got your offensive and defensive spells for dueling, spells that help you solve puzzles and traverse obstacles, and then the utility spells which we will cover a little later. All in all, Hogwarts Legacy seems to borrow a little something from each of the old games for its spells, while also borrowing some mechanics from modern games. And uh, one of these mechanics is the incredibly generic way the characters exchange dialogue. Luckily, you can skip through dialogue, but the game doesn't just cut to the next line, it has the character awkwardly stop in the middle of the sentence and then just stand there for a moment. In fact, Professor Ronan will- Shh. Excellent choice. Miss Oni is one of our most- Shh. Shh. The NPCs also tend to do this thing where they reset back to their neutral expression immediately after they finish talking. Look, everyone's happy, bam, resting bitch face. Peeves the poltergeist is back. He was mainly present in the first two games. Sometimes you'd have to fight him as a boss battle. Sometimes you'd have to race him. This time he just flies around the castle making noises and looking like a bootleg Willy Wonka. Now, despite the name, this game has you venture beyond the castle to the surrounding areas, including Hogsmeade. Now, the last time we saw Hogsmeade in a video game, we were sniping Death Eaters and using the AK-47 spell. Naturally, this time around, the atmosphere is a lot more chill. Madam Snelling's Tress Emporium. What the hell does that mean? Oh, come in! Come in! I'd like to leave now. What is it you might be interested in? Oh, right, it's a barber shop. Well, at least this game can use magic as an excuse to regrow hair. I guess that barber from San Andreas was a secret wizard too. Say hi to your brother for me. Hmm, it's a pretty decent selection. We've got Fabio, an MMA fighter, a Karen, but I think I'm gonna rock the evil stepmother from Cinderella look for a bit. I didn't know Ollivander had a branch here. Oh cool, you can make your own wand. Do uh, these sliders actually do anything? Because to be honest, I'd rather have that enchanted axe I saw down the street and it seems like it would be a lot more useful. Yeah, so this will do. Hello baby, get a load of my 14 and a half inch unyielding English oak. I mean, I appreciate the effort they went into with all these customizable options, but this isn't an oversized blade from Final Fantasy or even a lightsaber cut. It's a tiny stick you'll hardly ever notice. I wish they'd have spent more time on, you know, stopping characters from doing this. Accio chicken. Oh, holy shit, it worked. Wow, look at my magic robe that doesn't get wet after going for a swim. As I said, I do love how peaceful Hogsmeade is. Oh shit, it's a giant troll wearing Warcraft armor. So in Philosopher's Stone, you'd make the troll sneeze by throwing these puffer pods at them. I don't see any of those around, so I'm just gonna have to use a big bang attack. Right, now that I've saved the day, I can continue shopping. Oh nice, I can dress as a hobbit. Yes please. I better go and get a haircut to match my cosplay. All right, back to the castle, and of course, it wouldn't be Hogwarts without the moving paintings. Oh nice, this one's got a guitar. All right, let's hear you play. Fortunately, not all the teachers in this iteration of Hogwarts are pensioners. We've got this Instagram influencer, Professor 
Garlic? Really? This whole class is a trip. First you pull out these mandrakes that almost destroy the greenhouse, and then before you know it, you're collecting these fighting cabbages. Vicious little bastards, aren't they? As for the potions class, it's taught by a handsome, rugged version of Professor Snape. And yes, you have to stir the potion. Oh god, this brings back memories. Come on! Why won't you heat her? Luckily, this time around, it's a simple quick time event. Okay, let's talk about a few of the other gameplay mechanics. So, wizard dueling has been present in pretty much every Harry Potter game, and there have been different iterations, from tennis, to turn-based, to third-person shooter, and everything in between. This game's dueling mechanic is most similar to the one from the Half-Blood Prince game. You have offensive, defensive, and augmentative spells. You know what, I'm having so much nice, safe fun throwing a wooden crate full pelt at a fellow student's head, but it's not all action and one play. This game has its fair share of sneaking sections. Now, there was plenty of sneaking in the old games, usually involving Harry's invisibility cloak. This time, we're relying on the stealth camo spell. The game does kind of turn into Metal Gear Solid in these sections. Look, we've even got the Soliton radar. Although, I must say, the guards in MGS were a little more switched on. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy also has a bunch of dungeons. They're not based around learning spells this time, instead they're integrated into the story. Right, so they told me there was going to be a big spider here somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's having a bit of trouble. Uh, give it a second. There is a room of requirements, and at first it looks very similar to the one in Deathly Hallows Part 2. This one, however, is filled with loads of easter eggs and elements you can interact with. The room quickly transforms into your own space. This reminds me of the secret base mechanic from the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire games, just on steroids. You can literally go full sims in this place. Look, there's furniture, decorations, artwork. Where's the uh, heart-shaped jacuzzi and flat-screen TV? The developers seem to be really proud of this gameplay feature, so much so they force you to just stay here and customize it. All right, I get it. I'll never be able to afford a place this big in real life. Can we move on now? As you can tell, Hogwarts Legacy is certainly packed with features, but this game does tend to dip into the order of the Phoenix territory of running around this beautiful castle doing fetch quests as part of the main campaign. But unlike the order of the Phoenix game, Hogwarts Legacy has plenty of side quests, challenges, trials, and collectibles to add a bit of variety to the mix. Playing this game also made me realize the huge parts the characters played in the Harry Potter franchise. You're running around this familiar castle filled with a bunch of characters that are sort of familiar. Many of them will have the same last name and follow the same archetype, but end up coming off like the own brand version of beloved characters we grew up with. And then you get on the broom and forget all about that other stuff. Oh my god, they're saying up. Oh my god, you can fly through rings like in the original. Oh my god, you can free fly around the map? And you can customize your own broom? If you haven't guessed, free flying around Hogwarts was definitely the highlight for me. It brought back memories of doing the same thing in the Chamber of Secrets game 20 years ago. It's just a shame about Quidditch though. Like they've got the stadium all rendered and ready, almost like they're teasing you. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Now, if you've already completed the game, then you'll know that I've only really covered about 40% of it in this video. I knew a lot of you folks would be waiting for this video, so I wanted to get something out sooner rather than later. Also, I know a lot of you are still playing through it, so I wanted to do a video that's light on spoilers and covers the broad elements of the game. I think there's enough content left over for at least one or two more videos, so please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a second part of this video. I'd also be interested to know your thoughts on the game. Has it lived up to your expectations? Is there anything you change, add, or remove? Leave a comment with your thoughts below. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.